So today I wanted to do a quick video about one of the most useful manoeuvres or shall I say most useful sailing techniques that I think there is and it's a technique that I've been using pretty much on every sailing trip I've been on probably in the last five trips I've used this technique and I've used it for various reasons each time so I want to talk about heaving to or the hove to position and how useful it is We've got a beautiful day out here today. We've got about 10 knots of wind and uh, gorgeous sunshine. And it's a perfect opportunity to practice heaving to and try and work out how your boat sits when it is hove to. So some of the situations that I've used recently um, whilst heaving to is one of them, my tiller pilot cut out and the fuse blew on the switch panel. And uh, so I had no steering, but I had to change the fuse. So I very quickly went into the hove to position and got nice and settled which gave me the chance to replace a fuse and get things up and running again. Another situation that I was in was I was sailing a 30 foot boat down to Harwich recently and we were approaching the shipping lanes and the big container ships they come out of nowhere. They're a small dot on the horizon and within 10 to 15 minutes they're right up behind you or right up coming across the front of your bow on a collision course. And uh, we just sat there very comfortably, watched the big cargo ship come through. As soon as it came past and the tugs got all their lines on, we then went round the back of it, which was absolutely ideal. Now another situation that I found myself using this technique in was sailing back from Harwich in Elise, which is this boat. And it was getting dark and I was trying to get out to sea far enough where I'm not going to find the fishing nets or the lobster pots or crab pots and I was on a beat so I was sailing upwind close hauled and I, in the distance I could see a lot of pot markers so as I approached I could see that there was a pot marker I was on a collision course and I luffed the boat right up onto the wind to try and let the tide just take me around it but it was clear I wasn't going to manage it so I actually did a crash tack into the hove to position very last minute, which meant that I could change my course very quickly without having to do any planning or any rope handling or anything. I literally crash tacked the boat into the hove to position and the tide started drifting me away from the buoy. And then I was able to get the Genoa across, sheeted in, main sheeted in a bit, bit of boat speed, and then tack back onto my course while I was heading out to sea to get far enough out to avoid the pots. So there is three situations where heaving two is a really useful technique to use. So there's other situations that this technique can be used. And one of the biggest ones that you hear of the most is in heavy weather. Now it's really useful to be able to hove two in heavy weather because it will just calm everything down. And uh, and you can take a break, have a sleep. A lot of solo sailors do this so they can have a sleep. And it's a pretty safe manoeuvre to use. But it's, I think it's well underused and it should be in your escape plan and ready to pull out the bag in case you get in any one of these situations. Quite often you can just hove to and just put the kettle on and chill out. Now there's three things to consider for preparation before getting into the hove to position. The first one is to trim your sails so you are on a close hauled point of sail. So as you can see here, I'm sailing quite close to the wind and I've got the Genoa in tight and the main is in relatively tight as well. The second thing that I like to do is set my traveler to the central position. That just gives it a nice neutral position and the final thing that I like to do is to make sure that I'm on port tack. Now the reason for this is if you turn into the hove to position from port tack, you will end up on starboard tack, which means that you at least are the stand on vessel should there be another sailing vessel coming towards you on port. Over my shoulder where I'm gonna be tacking into is clear, so I've got space to maneuver into. So to initiate my manoeuvre, all I'm going to do 
is tack the boat and I'm going to put it through the tack fairly slow. I'm also going to be doing this one handed so I'm going to disengage the tiller pilot and take over. So stand by. Now I'm hand steering and as I say I'm going to tack the boat very slowly so I'm going to ease the tiller to leeward or leeward. The boat is slowly coming round. The jib has backed. So I'm, what I'm going to do now to complete this manoeuvre is I'm going to have the tiller down to leeward and I'm going to release the mainsail. But we'll just let the boat settle into a nice comfortable position. The Genoa is in quite tight. You definitely don't want it as tight as you can get it because in this case it's putting pressure on the shrouds and you definitely don't want it too loose because if it's too loose you'll start to get some airflow across the mainsail and you won't be able to hove to properly. So now we are in the hove to position and the boat feels like it's settled a lot now so let's take a look at some numbers and what the boat is actually doing whilst we're in this position. So we've got eight knots of wind and the wind is on the beam at 90 degrees and on the chart plotter you can see I've got the black vector which is my heading sensor that will always be directly out the front of the boat and the blue vector is the direction of travel. So the blue vector is facing slightly forwards because the tide is actually pushing us forwards but you can see the blue vector is actually to the side about 60 degrees to the side so the direction of travel is actually sideways and if we have a look around the boat we can actually see what is happening here. So down there we've got some swirling water this is to windward of me and you can see it's actually like a bit of a slick down there it's quite calm so if it was a bit rougher I wouldn't be having waves lapping onto the side of the boat and soaking me. God, you can see that down there and that is an indication that the boat is moving sideways. Additionally if we look at the transom you can actually see what is happening with the bubbles and what direction we're moving in but we are actually moving sideways towards the beach. The Genoa because it's sheeted past the mast here that is stopping any wind flow from coming across the mainsail and trying to create drive. Now the tiller needs to be all the way to leeward. We haven't got any drive on the mainsail so there's no water flow moving over the rudder to be able to steer us back up towards where the wind is coming from and because the Genoa is backed that is pulling the nose of the boat away from the wind. So I can kick back in this position for pretty much as long as I like and we were doing nearly five knots against the tide straight into the hove to position and as soon as I went into that position everything just calmed right down and is actually very nice and relaxing sat here and we are also on starboard tack and we are still underway so we do not have restricted ability to manoeuvre and we are not anchored we are still technically sailing so we still need to maintain a lookout and keep watch so in order to get the boat going again we can do three things the first one is straighten the tiller up the second is to release the Genoa sheet and then sheet the mainsail in and trim that and we can either sheet in so we're close hauled again and tack back onto our original course which was port tack or we can continue in the direction we are facing now so in this case I'm just going to sheet in to close hauled and tack back onto port tack. 
So we are now sailing again on close hauled. So heaving to is the way I've just done it is the way that it works in my boat. Now it's going to work differently in different boats with different keel types, different lengths, different rigs. It's going to work completely different, which is why it's important to spend time practicing it so that you know exactly how the boat is going to lie and how you're going to want to set the tiller or rudder or wheel and your sails to lie the best way that you possibly can um, when you're when you're in the, the hove to position. Now I don't claim to be an expert at sailing and yachting although I have been doing it all my life. This is my personal experience and the way that I've demonstrated is purely how I do it. There's probably loads more information out there about heaving to but I just thought this is the way I'm going to cover it in a short video and as I say if it helps one person if one person watches this video and says that is good I'm going to practice it more then that is well worth me doing the video and I'm happy with that but thanks for watching <laughs>